So for the last 10 plus years, there's been this uh, gap between available workers and available jobs. You know, minimum wage to $15 an hour, $20 an hour, those types of jobs. It's really difficult to spend the time and resources needed to find those people when you know they're they're fifteen twenty dollar an hour. It's it's a it's a real difficult nut to crack. Here's the thing that we're going to cover today. It's kind of nutty, but we're going to talk about process systems so you can get predictable results in bringing high caliber talent into your team. Got a good friend of mine, Patrick Johnson. Now he happens to be a client and a friend. And today I'm really excited to have him here. He is the CEO and managing partner of Talent Tuition. And he's all about helping you recruit talent. Patrick, thanks for being here today. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. So let's talk quickly about your origin story. Like, so everybody, and don't worry, brag about yourself a little bit so that everybody knows how badass you are. All right. So uh, talent acquisition, I've been doing this for 20 years. First job out of college was, you know, hard-nosed staffing manager. Wow. Um, you know, went through the ringer. Um, and, you know, 20 years later, we've got uh, a company now that um, we recruit and do talent uh, outsourcing um, and talent recruiting. Um, we've got about 50 openings at a time that we work on. We wow. hire about 30 people a month um, mm -hmm. all across the country. Mm -hmm. um, we do it uh, kind of uh, the non-traditional way. So it's not a, a headhunting firm or a fee-for-service type of thing. It really is you know, process-driven and process outsourcing. So that's kind of the, uh, the down and dirty of who we are. Um, yeah. And who, and who are your standard clients? Like when you, at the end yeah. of the day, when you're winning business, who are the people that go, oh my God, Patrick, I'm so glad I'm working with your company. So it's interesting. We have kind of this unique uh, partnership with some large organizations okay. um, called professional employment organizations. So yep. they, they co-employ, you know, sometimes hundreds of thousands of, of people but they're all made up of these small business owners. Okay. So these, these big firms have, you know, their clients that they do this total HR outsourcing for, they do like payroll and HR and benefits and work comp um, for all of these small companies that maybe, you know, five employees, 10 employees, you know, but yeah. together they make this massive conglomerate. Mm -hmm. We provide the recruiting process outsourcing to, for all of those clients. So okay. our bread and butter is the, what we call a craftsman business owner. So that's a business owner that, you know, they know their product or service really well. They're passionate about it and they went and started a business. Okay. Those people tend to be perfect fits for what we do because they're not in the business of hiring people. Mm -hmm. They're in the business of doing what they do and doing what they're passionate about. So you know, we can offload all of those processes to um, allow them to enjoy their business again and help them, you know, uh, find, you know, the biggest asset in their company, which is their people. I love it. Okay. And so today, again, we're, we're focused on the process, the systems yeah. and creating predictable results. But the origin of this conversation is really a document that you shared with me and, and your belief that there's this like, short-term opportunity for people. And I think this is important to bring up. So I'm going to real quick, just share screens so you can talk through what you mean by this short-term opportunity in the market for, for talent right now. You know, in doing this for so many years, you know, we, we wouldn't be in business if there wasn't some sort of a labor shortage. Yep. You know, if it was easy to find people, then companies like mine, other than the value in um, outsourcing the process, you know, there, there's, it, it shouldn't be this difficult to find people. But so for the last 10 plus years, especially in a lot of industries, there's been this uh, gap between available workers and available jobs where 
there's more um, available jobs than there are qualified people to, to work those jobs. So um, we've been in a tight labor market is what you're saying. Yes. And, and we're, we're 10 plus years of this. Think about industries uh, like healthcare, uh, skilled trades, um, general labor, um, hospitality, uh, all of these industries where these positions are not, we're not talking about, you know, the, the hundred, two hundred thousand dollar a year jobs. We're, we're talking about the, the backbone jobs, you know, minimum wage to $15 an hour, $20 an hour, those types of jobs. It's really difficult to spend the time and resources needed to find those people when, you know, they're, they're $15, $20 an hour. It, it's, it's a, it's a, real difficult nut to crack. So we've been in that for over 10 years. Sure. Um, and then? And then COVID hit. <laughs> we all get smacked with this. Right. And, you know, restaurants uh, are laying off. Uh, nobody's going to hotels anymore. They're laying off, you know, and, and now we have this crazy, massive shift in the labor market. That right. we've, that we've seen. And that's, yeah, that's what your point. That's this right thing. Here. Right. Where available workers just goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, but companies can't hire them. People aren't going out to restaurants. They're not going to hotels. They're, they're not buying cars. They're not doing all of the things that, that these, uh, these workers typically do. Um, so eventually that's going to go back to normal. It's not going to stay like this forever. Um, there is going to be a time when things will go back uh, to normal. And there's this, we're seeing this, uh, this narrow window where a really forward thinking business owner, right, that little window right there. If, if you've got the, um, the foresight uh, to take advantage of this, you can start talking to candidates now start going after and rehiring with better people than you had before. Um, you can also look for an opportunity to, to change the way that your labor has worked in your company. You know, there's a lot of positions that, you know, a house um, a housekeeper at a hotel has to be there on site and doing it. But the person that was doing the, the accounting that now worked from home and you had to lay that person off, they don't necessarily need to come back to the office. There's an opportunity to outsource that person as well. So there's, uh, but, but this, this opportunity or this window uh, is going to get closed. You know, um, eventually we will get back to that point. How long do you think that window is in, in real terms? Yeah. I mean, I'm, it's open right now. So okay. You know, it's, it's not, hey, this window of opportunity is going to happen in a few months. We are in the window right now. I'm already starting to see it. Okay. Um, where, you know, we've instructed a lot of our clients to say, hey, you know, let us continue to recruit for you. Even though you're not hiring yet, let us mm -hmm. talk to candidates. We'll evaluate them for culture fit and, and find out if they're really talented. And let's get them on the hook a little bit. Tell them, look, we're not ready to hire just yet, but when we do, we want you. Right. That will keep the, you know, that'll keep the really good people engaged. And we're already seeing that pool of people that we've built for some clients start to get jobs other places. So let's talk about that because it's a perfect lead into the process, right? And everybody kind of is curious um, you know, we have a particular process, then mm -hmm. my friend has a different one. And here we are, we've got a 20 year veteran who owns a company that this is exactly what they do. Like, so I think it's, it's right. really important. How do you, you know, what does your process look like? And then how do you evaluate your talent? So the, the process um, starts with uh, getting to know a client and, and really getting to know their culture. Okay. That's the biggest mistake we see people make. Um, you know, they make a lot of different mistakes in hiring, but it all kind of boils down to the same thing is that they don't put culture fit 
high enough on the on the importance of criteria. Mm-hmm. They value things like years of experience, or um, you know the the type of skill set somebody has, and they don't focus enough on culture fit and true talent. You know, or they or they really tap good. the shoulder of like their best friend's cousin's aunt. And they hire somebody who has neither the skill nor the previous experience. And then they screw that up. Right. Yeah. That, you know, we're, we're good. I like, I like referrals. Yep. But you have to put them through candidate referrals, but as long as they're put through the exact same process as everyone else, Mm -hmm. because if you don't and you hire that person and they don't work out, now you've got a problem because you have a bad employee, but you might have another problem with the person that referred you to this person. That's right. That's a whole, that's a whole never, another problem we don't need as, as business owners. Right. Um, but, uh, but our process, you know, we, we have to learn what a company's culture is. And a lot of times I'll talk to a company and they don't know what it is. So if I'm mm. giving somebody advice, when the first thing to do before you start hiring is to know yourself really well. Mm-hmm. If you don't know yourself, you're not going to find a match. Right. So you've got to have all of your ducks in a row, your culture statement, your vision, your mission, have all of that stuff lock solid. Do you put that in the ad? Are you putting culture or are you trying to interweave the cultural fit components into the ad? So you're attracting the right culture fits from the beginning? Um, typically no. Um, uh-huh. and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Um, sometimes we'll advise companies to do that. If it's a situation where I'm going to, I know if I place an ad for this position, I'm going to get hundreds of candidates. Right. In that situation, then sure, be as detailed as possible. It, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's okay to sell your vision a little bit, but you don't want to give candidates the answers to the test. Got it. And the test is when you talk to them. Got it. Then you start asking them questions that are not yes or no questions, and their answers will tell you if they're culture fit or not. Because okay. if you put in the ad, hey, here's what we're all about. We're about accountability and honesty and, yeah, yeah. You know, and all of this. And a candidate's smart. They're reading that. And then when they get on the phone with you, they say, hey, you ask them, hey, what are some of your values? And they pull up that ad and go, well, I believe in this, this, and this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go, wow, what a perfect culture fit. Yeah. So we, we don't put a lot of that in there. We want to get that from our client and then – draw that out of the candidate when we're talking to them. Got it. What is, um, okay. So culture fit and then what's next in your screening process? Talent, skills, and experience. Those are the, those are the things. So during an interview, so we're, we're posting ads. We've got a whole process for posting ads. Yep. Um, and it's not just about posting ads. You know, you, you need to go to all kinds of different places to Mm -hmm. get, uh, candidates does can I just put it on Craigslist and like hope you can <laughs> <laughs> that's not what you would do though not what I would do no I not that Craigslist is bad but you've got to be a little bit more strategic with um, where you're placing the ads that are going to get the type of people that you want for the job that you want got so it. we use Craigslist uh, I, I use Craigslist for positions all the time Okay. Because in certain regions, it does okay. And for certain jobs, it does okay. Got it. There's hundreds of places to post jobs. And you just have to be smart about it and go through the whole process of of refreshing the ads, changing them up, making sure you've got good candidate flow. Yep. Um, so, So then from there, we, you know, we start evaluating them. Skills and experience are pretty straightforward. Like, uh, you know, can they use a 10 key or, you know, have they ever engaged in sales? Right. I I get that. But talent is something that is a little bit of a black box for people. So, you know, and as an entrepreneur and a business guy, like I always hope and think the best of people, like it's a, it's a good and, you know, I'm I'm really driving and demanding once you're on the boat. Right. But 
in the interview process, I'm always like, well, they said they can do this. This is great, you know? And then turns out they may or may not be talent. So how do you help employers really uncover whether a candidate is talent or not? Yeah, and, and you know I like sports analogies. So, <laughs> so okay. I'll give you, I'll give you my, my sports analogy of the, the difference is, yeah. you know, if you're starting a basketball team mm-hmm. and, you know, you're, you're picking your players, you're drafting your players and you've got, you know, player A that's played ball for 10 years. They've got 10 years of experience doing it and they know how to do everything. Yep. They know how to do free throws. They knew how to do three pointers. They know how, to, they know all the rules. They know everything. Right. Right. Um, that's, that's skills and that's experience. Right. Um, talent is the difference between somebody who can make all the shots and dunk and do all of that stuff. And then culture fit is the good teammate, the person that's going to be the glue that holds the team together. Mm. So as employers, why do we care about, you know, yeah, we need, you need to be able to do those things, but if you've got a 40 inch vertical, uh, I can teach you the rules of basketball. Got it. Right. Wait, wait. So is the 40 inch vertical, is that a skill or is that talent? That's talent. Cause I'm okay. That's so that's skill. talent. Okay. Skill is being able skill to pass the ball. Things that I know how to do. Okay. So in the business world, a skill would be, I know how to use my CRM. Okay. okay. Got it. It's a skill. You know how to do it. Talent is the person that can uh, accomplish the exact same thing in their CRM in five minutes that it took someone else two hours to do. Got it. Okay. So it's being able to execute is what you're saying. It's execution. Right. So most business owners, we're we're thinkers. We're the idea people. We are chasing and shining objects. Right. We need to surround ourselves with people who can execute, who can carry out my vision. Sure. So, you know, there are instances where like if I'm hiring, I want to, I want to take a step back and I want to hire somebody to take over my company, right? take over this division, lead this team, come up with new ideas to drive things forward. Yep. Then you want a thinker and then you surround that thinker with doers. Got it. So it depends on the role is your, is your, is your answer. A, a, A doer is, is definitely a talent. It's the, the, the person that is, um, you know, uh, on, the, on the basketball court, it's the person that's diving for loose balls all the time. Got it. You know, that's hustling up and down the court. You know, yep. they may not be as skilled as somebody else, but man, they make up for it in effort. Aha. Uh-huh. That's me in life, right? <laughs> I'm not going to shoot the ball and make it, but I'll run fast. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and I'll say from a process standpoint, you know, the framework is the same. But okay. You should have a unique process for every position that you hire for. Every single one of them has, uh, I mean, the, the, the general framework is the same. You know, I, I, I identify what I'm looking for, identify my culture, I start finding candidates, I evaluate candidates, I hire candidates. Got it. You know, that process stays the same. However, there's a big difference between, you know, I'm trying to hire salespeople or healthcare workers is a big one right now too, that are in high demand. And I want the best. Right. So not only am I evaluating them, but they're evaluating me. Mm. So that's, that's something that that's another thing that you've got to put in there where uh, that that's the pull. How do you, how, how do you help clients that are like, what do you mean? They're evaluating me. And wouldn't you want the me evaluation on both sides of it? Like whether it's a highly, you know, demanding kind of talent market versus, you know, there's a huge labor pool available. Like, wouldn't you want the, we're awesome to work for conversation to happen no matter what? Yes. Yeah, that abs- absolutely. Okay. It's just the, to what degree do you do it? Because, you know, there's, um, we, we, did a, we did a job for uh, an oil and gas company and they're hiring welders. Yeah. So these are highly, highly specialized positions, highly compensated. There's maybe 
you know, 50 people in the country that can do this job. Got it. And 50 people know that they're the only 50 people that can do it. (laughs) They're the hot, they're the hot person at the dance that everybody wants to dance with. And they know it. Yeah. That's awesome. uh, In, in that, that extreme, 90% of the interview is here's why you should come work for us. Gotcha. 10% is tell me about you and and evaluating them to make sure that they're not somebody that is going to, you know, spoil your culture. Right. So, yeah, then there's other scenarios where it might be, you know, 80, 20, you know, Mm -hmm. 20% of the time I'm telling you here's, here's about us, but maybe you do that. You do that second because you also, I can't emphasize this enough. You, can't even in those scenarios you can't give them the answers to the test smart people are gonna you know if you sell them on your company here's why you should work for me especially salespeople. right <laughs> they're yeah. gonna say all right now let me sell you on 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 me and i'm just yeah. gonna use your words against you right that's so, so you interesting gotta, you gotta be careful so there's a lot of things. So you, you're like, don't coach the applicants to win the game when you're right. in the interview process. Right. And that's, that's so hard for business owners, especially leaders, people who are passionate about what they do. We want to talk about our businesses. We want, to, we want people to want to work for us. You know, mm. we want yeah. to be excited about our vision. We want people on the bus that share it. So it's, really hard to kind of keep that play that stuff close in until the right time you might it is actually kind of a good to have an outsourced partner in the recruitment process because that's me i mean i i'm talking to the candidate and being like it's gonna be so much fun we're gonna we're gonna dominate the world together come on just jump on my ship and they're like i don't know daniel well you know even even if they don't outsource it or don't use us or don't outsource anything and just do it themselves Yep. At the very least, have another person in the in the room with you. Uh, have okay. another have another person in your organization that's your co-pilot. Got it. And your job as the business owner, if it's your job to do the hiring, yep. Try to try to spend less time talking and more time observing. Mm-hmm. Give this other person the questions to ask the candidate. Then let you know, then kind of see how, how they interact and see how those questions are answered. Then when it comes time and you're like, yeah, I do like this person. I think they'd be a good fit. Then mm-hmm. sell. Got then it. Flow, then share your vision. Right. After so maybe in interview two or number three, but not in the beginning of the process. No, exactly. Exactly. Okay. I mean, you, you've got to give them a little, a little bit here and there. But, you know, the, the full vision conversation, um, you know, can come towards the middle or end of the, of the process. In your process and the systems that you take, what are the things that you're kind of checking the box on to make sure happens every single time? And then you know that things are going right. Yeah, so kind of our, our, our KPIs on our, you know, from top to bottom, we, we start with candidate flow. Yep. And where are those candidates coming from? Are we getting candidates from social media? Are we getting them from ads? Are we getting them from internal referrals? Are we getting them from the client's website? You know, which, which ads are, which titles are getting us the most candidates? If we titled an ad this way, if we titled it differently, you know, we, we take a really hard look at where those are coming from so that we can hone in on what's working well and then focus. Got it. How long does that, process of uh, what I would say is crafting the right marketing message for the position. How long does that typically take when somebody hires you? Um, You know, there are, um, you know, ones that we've done over and over again that we know really well, we can, we get that narrowed in within the first week. Sure. Sure. So there's, there's other um, industries where, you know, higher volume industries, highly competitive industries, where that process is ongoing. Always. It's always happening. We are all, you're, you're, it's not a, I hired someone, I'm done situation. It's sure. a, I need five people hired a week type yep. of situation. 
And Makes in sense. that, you know, if we, if something worked today and it's working well by tomorrow, it's stale and it doesn't work anymore. Hmm. And so you've got to stay on top of it and constantly refresh ads. All right, I'm, I'm doing everything on this job board and then I'm going to switch it to this other one for a while and let that one sit. And chill right. out. And then go so to this one. after, after candidate flow, what's next? Next is, is speed of execution in the uh, contacting candidates. Okay. So um, every day, we are looking at who applied that day. Not the Got day it. before, but that day. So by the end of the day, the goal is that we have acknowledged and reached out to everybody who has applied during that day. Okay. So you're, so, you're trying in the same day, if they apply to have a conversation. At some sort of communication, not always a physical conversation. Okay. But it could be a text message. Hey, just got your resume. Thanks for applying. You know, look for an email from me to set up a time to talk. Great. Um, you know, something like that. Uh, because the reason we do that, um, you know, if, if, if you or I are out, you know, looking for a job. Yep. We're not, you've heard the adage, looking for a job is a full-time job. Yeah. You know, somebody's really looking. It takes, so they're not applying to just you today. They applied right. to you and anybody else they found to apply to that day. Mm -hmm. You want to be their first impression. Sure. That's who they will remember the most while it's still fresh in their mind. That, that speed of execution is, is key. Well, and, and it's a black box, really. If, if, if you think about a, people who apply for a job, they have hit the button and then they never know if they're ever going to get called. So if you just send a text or a response email you're all of a sudden probably one of 100 right. people that you're the only one maybe. And even if on paper you don't like them, send them something, have an automated system, have, you know, we've got all kinds of automated systems that look really personal. And sometimes we do it personally that acknowledge every single person that applies to every single job. Hmm. And we're talking about 50,000 people a year. I wow. Mean, that's a lot of communication, but that will pay long-term dividends because there's nothing worse than being known as an employer where, you know, don't, don't, don't apply to them. It's a black hole. You'll never, you'll never hear from them again. This has been amazing. I think we're getting to the point where, uh, you know, our audience took a lot of notes, you know, and they're getting a lot out of this. Um, but I, we went over the process. We went over the systems you gave a lot of good kind of wealth of knowledge about what really you should be focusing on. Why is right now, in your opinion, we're going to wrap up with a simple question and then how people can get a hold of you. But why is it right now the time to move as an employer, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner to kind of get this talent wrapped up? I think, I think there's, there's two reasons to do it. One is that there is some fantastic talent out there right now that hasn't been there for 10 years. Yep. And now is the time to get them. Sure. And get, get to them first before somebody else does. All these people that were laid off uh, don't have to go back to work for the same company. They can go back to work for you. That's, that's one fantastic reason. Um, the other one is that if you are going to make a change, you know, a lot of people avoid change. I don't want to change my process. I don't want to take one step back in order to take two steps forward. Now is a perfect time to make those time investments in your business. You know, if, if your revenues are down, if business is down, use that as an opportunity so that when the recovery for you starts, that curve is steep. That's, I like that. Those are the reasons to do it right now. I like that. And if anybody is listening and they're like, I want to hire Patrick to help me revamp my system, make sure that we're doing it the right way, or just do it for, like if, if they were like, I just want to hire this guy, how would somebody get a hold of you, Patrick? Just contact me directly, Patrick at talentuition.com. Okay. Um, go to our website, talentuition.com 
Um, we've got a great blog there. We've got, um, uh, you can send something to info at talentuition.com. Okay. Um, we've always got somebody available to, to chat with. Um, there you go. And uh, I, uh, my job is, is chatting with small business owners. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fortunate enough in my career now where I get to do what I love. So anybody that wants to talk shop or talk about recruiting, reach out to me and, uh, and I'm, I'm happy to share resources, share ideas and help out the small business community.